Hi, my name is Brian McGivern, and I'm a civil rights attorney. I was signed up to be uh, later in the presentation, so I apologize to whomever I may have cut in front of. But I think anyone who knows Steve knows that sometimes you just get caught up in his train of enthusiasm. And so um, I got a little bit up further in line. I wanted to speak to you just briefly about the school to prison pipeline in Austin and what can be done about it at a municipal level. Now, I wear a few different hats as an attorney. My day job is with the Texas Civil Rights Project, and I'm involved with another, a number of other legal service organizations around Austin uh, as a board member and as a volunteer. I specifically want to talk to you about the work of the Austin Lawyers Guild uh, regarding the school to prison pipeline. Now, it's a big term. It's a big umbrella, a big can of worms. It involves a lot. It's a big umbrella, a big can of worms. It involves a lot of different factors uh, related to how children from low-income communities and uh, from communities of color go into our criminal justice system disproportionately. And what I'm specifically interested in is um, a, a small component of that, the criminalization of school discipline. Now, this is something that I personally became aware of uh, early this year. But it's not new. It's, in fact, well documented. For the last 10 or 15 years, schools around Texas have made the choice to move their discipline work from uh, the schools to the courtrooms. And for conduct that once would have landed you in the principal's office when I was in school and when you all were in school, now is landing kids in a courtroom for offenses like a disruption of class. Um, every year in the state of Texas, 275,000 non-traffic related tickets are being written to Texas students. In Austin, that number is in the thousands. Now, these are Class C misdemeanors. And you may ask yourself, what, why is this important? How does this contribute to the school to prison pipeline? Well, the answer to that is the, the seriously, seriously detrimental effect that a person's future suffers by virtue of having a criminal record. Now, when you're convicted of, you know, horseplay in the school for assault or for disruption of class or for anything else, that's something that shows up every time a person pulls your criminal record in the future. That means it becomes more difficult to get a job because most employers will check your criminal record. That means it becomes difficult to find a place to live because those of us that live in apartments know that typically you have to file an application to become a member of an apartment complex. It makes it difficult to get an education because most school applications require a criminal background also. So as a result of this simple choice that schools are making to um, not exercise their duties to discipline children, but rather to send them to court, we're condemning innumerable children to um, a hindered future to tying a millstone around their neck that doesn't deserve to be there. Now, a group of us, a group of attorneys with the Austin Lawyers Guild, uh, took it upon ourselves to do something small about this. We began to organize um, groups to volunteer to represent children pro bono who've been uh, cited with these tickets. Uh, this is just a small effort, because our, our concern is children walking into a courtroom by themselves to sit down with the prosecutor to uh, typically plead out, uh, pleading no contest to what they're charged with, because they think that they can simply pay a fine and walk away like a traffic ticket. Well, as it turns out, sitting down with the prosecutors, it's kind of like walking into a car dealership if you don't know about anything about cars. You don't know what a good deal is. You don't know what a lousy deal is. And I'm afraid a lot of these kids who are not making informed choices are walking away with really lousy deals, deals that result in building a criminal record. And so we hope to provide them with representation, but I, I would really like it. I, it's within our power to, instead of dealing with the symptom, deal with the disease. Now, in the future, as this project develops, I hope, anticipate having the opportunity to work with the district to 